did not go to the university. Our opinions don't matter here. So for me, I get one suggest to make. Okay. And then uh, I say, mm, make we talk, say, this bubble escape yeah. when then they do manual labor. <coughs> I think you understand me. You see, so you know, the only thing I mean, I won't put to be that too. I don't know what that. Yeah, I can um, talk, say, as the boy they run. Mm. All of us run for now. In the process, we fall. <coughs> I think you understand. Yes. So, uh, not true. This kind of thing, if it happened to anybody, anybody. No. It can never happen to me. I am old on the job. So, it can never happen to me. I want a gap. I want him. Now it has happened. Well, if the director does not ask me, I will not tell. Mm -hmm. If the director asked me, I would tell him Tony Ojedibi escaped from this office. I don't think we should be lying at his age. It's all right. It's all right. I will take responsibility. Tony Ojedibi escaped from this office. I will tell the director myself. Why? Why? You really think I for yourself? It's sad. Not everything going for you in this place. Your boss is like you. You get your due promotions on time. Yet, you've chosen a part of absolute stupidity. You've decided to create easy avenues for hardened criminals to escape from your custody. Stupid man, Charles. This is one mistake. A little too grave. And you're going to pay dearly for it. From this moment, you've lost this seat to someone else. Henceforth, you've been demoted. Demoted, I say, to the rank of a prison assistant. And let me tell you this. You'll be kept in prison custody until I decide exactly what to do with you. So if I like you, I'll be born to give you. I got child if you tell your people, make them give me heads out. I want to take my wife and my picking go church on Sunday. I don't tire for this, I can't go prison. I ask your president now. Ah, uh -uh. now you be president now. I like my Baba of the Baba Father of the Father Ah, you be a lemon. 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 Ah, you be a Done. I know how they have like that. No, 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 Senior Charles was demoted and was still kept in prison custody. That hurts. As you are all aware, I am now in charge. This is my era. I shall not tolerate any lackadaisical attitude from any one of you. Yes, there shall be no loitering around, no malingering, etc., etc. There are two categories of people here. The prisoners and us. The prisoners belong behind bars while we keep this civil area. No favorite prisoner shall be harbored in any of the offices. What 
What do you say? Sir? Who? Oh, is it you? No, sir. Hmm. I know some of you owe allegiance to some people who have been removed from this seat. There shall be no mute in you. Otherwise, I shall leave some of you to rot away in detention. Now, I want you all to get out of my office. Fatima obviously pretended to be ill and pleaded to be left alone to give serious thought to a possible future with Nasir. So the human traffic to our room was quite reduced. We had all the privacy to work on our next line of action. Fatima, the time seems right. Everywhere is quiet and then the corridor is clear and your parents are downstairs. I think I should better move now. Um, the information again. The keys are on the bedside table on the right. Then um, the travel documents are inside the closet drawers. Make, madame.
Is Fatima at home? Yes, yes, yeah, Fatima, I do home. And don't lean on my car, stupid. Okay, I'm talking this guy is here. The one is not be like that toy moto. How come you don't drive a guy? Good afternoon, Chief. My young in-law. Thanks for coming. Well, I came around to see my fiance. Elijah told me she was not feeling all right when I phoned in yesterday. Thanks for coming. She said she'd like to be alone to do some thinking, but I'm sure she's dying to see you. I permit you to see her upstairs. Thank you, Chief. I'll take you along. Come on. Come on, Nasir, don't be shy. Come on. It's nice seeing you again. What happened? And how are your parents? Baby, I'm going to leave you tonight. By tomorrow morning, we'll be free as the birds in the sky. We're going to leave our lives without any more headaches from anybody. Well, Fatima! Fatima! Easy. Fatima, you have a very special guest here to see you. Somebody I'm sure you're dying to meet. Hurry up, Fatima. I'm sure she'll be so happy to see you. You better hurry up. Fatima! What are you doing in there? Open the door. Guess who's here? Nasir heard you were sick and he decided to come and say hello. Isn't that rather thoughtful of him? Well, since, uh, the, the, you know, you've seen each other, I guess I'd better excuse myself while you have a little chat. That's all right. You'll excuse me. Thank you. Hi, baby. Would you keep me waiting? Come on. I can't feed you in my bed. Why not? I gave you a warm reception on my bottom floor. Nosy, I can't talk to you in my bedroom. You want us to discuss it on the yacht again? Nosy, please, let's go and discuss outside. Ah, uh, what's a big deal discussing outside this room anyway? I think we have all the privacy we need here. I refuse to say anything in here. When you needed 10,000 naira, I gave it to you without much ado, short of the incident that occurred on the boat. Did your mother get to know about it? I'm sure she wouldn't mind Nasiru having to father her useless grandchildren. Cheap people. Come on, girl. Let's plan our wedding. Just making sure your father doesn't make away with my expensive car. <laughs> Listen, I'm broke and I need my father's 10 million naira badly. Then we can go round it up by making some useless grandchildren for your mother. <laughs> Listen, girl, let's plan what our wedding will look like. Cheap bed. Cheap room. Cheap girl. <laughs> so, you have more men in your room. <laughs> Hi there. Well, you guys owe me plenty of thanks for doing the groundwork. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> the groundwork? <laughs> Hey, I think I know you. You're that wanted guy on TV. You're a star, man. <laughs> You're a star. Oh, <laughs> 
Akoni, please help me arrange some drinks for Nasiru. He's coming down soon to take them. You boy! A bad boy! I'll spit you in two, boy! So I'll go back to the prison. You're all I've got. Perhaps I've lost you. I am through with running. himself out of his miseries. Now I'll go back to the prison. At least your judge friend will have a legitimate reason to hang him. Big deal. You have an alarm. So bloody what? You can't even face me man to man. Now that we are at such a close range, you can't even talk to me man to man. You have to depend on alarms and ourselves. Be a man, Chief Canson. 
thank you. I don't want anybody to touch me. I'm not profit. I've not waited this long to make you the hero. I've told you I would turn myself in. Now we don't need anybody's help to do that. If you force me to strike any of these men down, I shan't hesitate to add you to my list. The police will soon be here. My neighbors would have called them. The alarm is connected directly to a police station. And it locks all the doors in this house. The street gate man has been ordered to lock the gate as soon as he hears this alarm. You have come to the wrong house. Switch it off. Not on your life. Switch the damn thing off! You please just not. switch it off! Please. I said I will not! And I'll smash this bottle on your head! The police will get there to catch me alive while you're still breathing. Please, don't cut my husband, please! I beg this man to move back! Please move back! Uh, Shut up and move back! I'm not giving this shit! Shut up! It is late. My neighbors would have barricaded the whole area. That's all nonsense. But I'm taking him. To achieve it, grab your car keys. I will not. I said, grab your car keys. No. Please. Here, take it, take it, please. Please don't hurt my husband. I beg. Just want him to do as I Chief, say. Just do as he says. Please, 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 Chief, think of me, think of your family, think of Fatima. Please, please. Friday, tell somebody to bring the kids to the bus by Jean. No, I want this car that is ready. You what? I want this car. That's the Benz 500 and I don't want anybody driving my Benz. I don't care what it is. Give me the keys. Femi, Femi, please give him the keys for God's sake. Please give him the keys. Give him the keys. Femi, please, please give him the keys, please. Well, if only you will let the uh, driver drive you. I don't want your driver to take me. I want the keys. I cannot steal this car. Park it where the police will find it easily. You get your car back. I remove your stupid bottle off my seat. I hope there's no barricade ahead of me on this street. If there is, I'll smash your 500 right through it. Tell Harold to open this gate and tell him to fly the barricade.
are you doing this to me? Who is this boy that you have sent into my life to ruin me? God, why are you doing this to me? Why? How can you watch another man's child die in my house? God, why are you doing this to me? God, why are you doing this?
dice you into so many pieces, so many pieces. Relax, Femi. Go inside. I'll make the call. Baba, what Come back, Mr. Ghana. Shut up there! You don't know your job. If you be water, you water well. As I be a lemon, I lemon well. If you be water, Water, water well. Well. And that's me the LM one. Yeah. My name is Albert. Albert Emakwa. I'm the new lawyer that Charles Wonkolo arranged for you. I don't need a lawyer. Too bad. You don't have a choice. I am doing this as a favor to Charles. So whether you like it or not, it doesn't really matter. A fool. Yes. A big fool. I can't stand guys like you. Look, you, you don't have a right to be rude to me, whoever you think you are. Shut up. I've come to accept the fact that we stuck. You don't like me, but I am not exactly crazy about you. So we're stuck. Like I told you, I'm doing this for Charles. Do you know something? My fool. A real big fool. You had a salvageable case. Your case will have turned out to be one of the biggest scandals in this country. But look at what you've done. Are you a judge or a lawyer? You are already jumping into conclusion. I am not jumping into any conclusion. The important thing is that you run away from this place. Now that is what really pisses me off. You ended up putting everybody into trouble that has been trying to help you. You run away from this place. Charles out there gathered a pack of brilliant people. Damn brilliant people to get you off the hook. You ran away. He approached me to take up this case and I was interested. Interested in doing it absolutely free of charge. He got out the finest journalist in this town. We had everything beautifully worked out. <laughs> Only to get there on that day. To discover that his majesty had escaped. Now, if, if, if even the church did not want to let you off the hook, his career would have been on the line. Now, Charles. Charles has been demoted. Five steps down. Locked up and humiliated because of you. I hope it thrills you. Because they are thinking of charging him to court for harboring a criminal like you in his office. Oh, yes. 
hope that makes you feel really, really happy. I'm so pissed with you now that I cannot even discuss your case with you. I'll be back here tomorrow when I'm in a better frame of mind. Getting you off this case means so very much to Charles. So very much. I'm a damn good lawyer. And I will give it my best shot, complicated as this may seem. I'll do my best for Charles, and ultimately, for you. But remember, I will do anything, anything, to be on the other side of this case. Remember that. Idiot. things trying to escape from Fatima's house. I can't remember ever fighting anybody physically, even as a child. At this stage of everything, I am an emotional wreck. I have this unexplained anger all bottled up in me. Everything I do seems to turn out wrong. I am upset with myself. I wonder what is happening to Fatima now. What will all this be doing to her? God, I love her so. relentlessly to ensure a successful case for me. There is something admirable in that man, but my deepest of instincts doesn't just trust him. At this point, I can't really place my finger on a specific thing. Good afternoon. 
Eh? Uh, please, is Chief Kamsen in, please? Chief in go, Kano. Oh, I see. Um, what about the Haja? Haja, I just leave. Are you sure? What do you mean? Are you sure? I say Haja, this kind of time. Haja, I just leave. And nobody is to wake it. Only Chief can wake it. Maka, do you go? Uh, no, 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 please. Uh, what, what about Fatima? Fatima? Fatima, I there for house. Uh, please call her for me. I'd like to speak to her. Aja, I told you that uh, no call anyone for Fatima. Listen, uh, I'm not that kind of man that Aja is talking about. Now, which kind of man are we? I say Aja, I told you that I no call Fatima for any man. Well, I, I'm one of Chief's friends. I have a very urgent message for Fatima. Maka, tell me the thing, I will tell it the thing. Listen, this is going to take a while. I don't finish work, talk. Okay, do you have a pen and a paper there, please? Eh, hey, hey. No, I don't get the pen. Only zero and paper. That will do, that will do, okay. Alright. But I wish you to do for phone, I'll make you know the entire law. Now your papa get to follow. When you tell me why I do garan garan this money, I carry your leg like chicken and you waka waka. Nobody waka has the con telling me nonsense here. This is a man. I talk it that he wants to make I write the bureau and favor. I sabi. Good afternoon, sir. Hold on, sir. I don't come. I don't come, sir. Yes, uh, please take this number down for me. It's very urgent. The number is 834-524. My name is uh, Mohammed Gumi. Tell her it is very urgent. Thank you. The man don't drop, sir. Who get called? So I don't know before I get Chris. Give me a paper, Johnny. Don't know anything. Just take it. This man not serious, sir. He has got everybody behind him. They're not going to stop at anything short of having my neck. In jail, I'll stay for a man. I have a lesson to learn for the rest of my life. You won't die, Tony. You won't die. I was always a baby. Just like the morning dew, you're so refreshing in all you do. All the my words I feel. These I've made into a song Just for you Yes, it's you I'm sure it's you and you alone You, the meaning of the world You took my life and made it blind You are the meaning of the world And I'd like to share that L-O-V with you, with you, with you, you, the meaning of the world, you took my life and made it brand new, you are the meaning of the world, and I'd like to share that L O V with you, with you, with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't no more reason to say, cause I found. For the count from now until the end. Cause 
invited him over for, for lunch and he was rude to the whole family and your father rebuked you for slapping the man. Maybe he didn't believe Nasir could say all those things. In other words, your father didn't believe you. No, come on, answer me, Fatima. Your father didn't believe you? Maybe. Maybe. Has he ever had any cause to doubt you before that day? Fatima, let me tell you something. Something that you will never have found out on your own. Your father's business at home and abroad has been a mess for upward of two years now. And uh, experts say that he will need about 50 million naira to get his business back on the road. Now the government uh, regulations on bank loans has also drawn a blind cutting over his ambition of getting his company back on the road. But um, somewhere along the line he was lucky and he met Alhaji Muhammad, as Nasiru's father. Uh, a very kind and religious man. Now Alhaji Muhammad has been known to single-handedly uh, uh, arrange for foreign loans for different countries, businesses and corporations and individuals. And so uh, he agreed to uh, arrange a loan for your father. But unfortunately, Alhaji Muhammad is not as uh, successful at home as he is in his business. All his children, most of his children are very, very irresponsible. Not very included. And he had hoped that uh, when they get married to uh, very responsible women, they will settle down and their lives will change for the better. So he promised them 10 million naira apiece. Alaji Muhammad came to your house in one of these um, Ramadan festivals and he saw you. And he liked the homeliness about you. And straight away he asked for your hand in marriage from your father, for his son, Nasir. That, my dear Fatima, is what preceded this ugly chain of events. Fatima, your father has been trying to trade you off for the survival of his business. How did you know this? 
become a lawyer. I do my homework very well. I get into investigations when it is very necessary. I do my best, especially when it comes to digging up facts. Thank you, Mr. Bumbai. But I can't testify against my father. I have to forgive him. All right. All right. I think we all should work very hard to get that foolish boy killed for daring to love a rich man's daughter. A very big crime. The director likes me, all right. He just feels that I should go away for a while, while all this uh, Tony issue blows over. Never mind. Uh, on conditional release, I'm not. This whole thing will blow away before you know. Besides, I've been doing some work, just in case the girl does not cooperate. I did some sniffing and digging around and came up with some very incriminating evidence against the George. You're not blackmailing him with anything, are you? Oh, come on, Charles. Do I have a choice in a case like this? What is it? Well, I found out that the guy has uh, six hotels in Lagos, four in Port Harcourt, and four in Benja. Fourteen of them on the whole. Big deal. Oh, everybody owns hotels these days. Oh, yes. Everybody owns hotels these days. But I'll tell you something, Charles. These are all brothels. Albert. Yes. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I also managed to lay my hands on some photocopies of vital documents, you know, the architectural plan of some of the buildings, all in Mr. Diamond's name. Boy, that's a good one. Yes. And I didn't stop that. I checked all the receipts of uh, the cases of prostitution that his court has ever handled. And I found that, that none of them has ever been sent to jail. <laughs> he always gives them warnings, mostly warnings. In fact, the harshest he has ever been on a case of prostitution was uh, a 59 fine. <laughs> so, uh, people like the Amola, they help keep. Uh, prostitutes in circulation so that they can have their businesses alive and well. <laughs> and you know what else I've been doing? I have been making anonymous phone calls to his house for the past one week. I just hope this black little thing doesn't backfire. Oh, come on. Relax, Charles. Relax. I'm in full control. Look, Fatima testifying in the, in, the, in the court or not, the judge must be favorable to your boy. I'm sure that's what you want. But I'll be on my way then. I just hope we're not counting our eggs before they're hatched. Check on your chance. I'm already hatching them. Hmm? <laughs> I'm already hatching them. When I hear giring giring giring, come I hear giring giring. Now him, this is the way my Nigeria I push for us. Say if a tip I enter, me I go. I say tip I don't come. I go come out. Now him I come out. I see this is shaking yaro. Kuna I see this is shaking yaro. He enter the house. He want the kwalaba. I know what is the kwalaba. Kwalaba is the one to kaga neba. This is what I'm going to do. I want to take a kill in my Megida. But Megida, I tell me, I say, Bala, Bala. Me, I show you, say, Bala, catch it. Me, I bless. I 
in my head. I want to kill it because I get blessed. I get blessed too much. When I carry the meat, this is this guy is carrying a polar bottle. When I go right, I go left. I go left, I go right. I can't do some kulet. I do some kulet. What life to life? When this man is carrying the polar bar, I want to kill him in my head. Me, I take him in my head. I want to kill it. When I carry the meat, this is saying you would like to like that. I don't know what you look on again. That would be all, my lord. Any cross examination? Yes, my lord. I understand that statement. Everything said and done in this course shall be of serious value. There shall be no fun making. I'm sorry, my lord. Just one more. Go ahead. Mr. Zagro, you just on and on about what the accused did to you. What were you holding? I will it make the name is up. Objection, my lord. The weapon was in self-defense. My lord, this witness claims that he had brought out the knife before Mr. Unibe attacked him with the bottle. The accused was threatening the witness's master, my lord. With what? It must have been declared dangerous. It wasn't as if it was going to bite him. What can I tell you to do like this? My lord. That would be all. The witness may step down. Well, at long last, the case is heading for a close. The prosecution, as well as defense counsel, have done a very good job. Even Mr. Lukman, the defense counsel before Mr. Mokoba, did a very good job. We should be looking forward to the addresses of the counsel when next we meet. I think I'd like to put one more witness on the stand. But you said you had no witness. I am now our witness. It's all right to come to your witness on the stand, but make it snappy. We have to close for the day. Thank you, my lord. down on the of things. What we should be doing now is to make arrangement for a uh, to be followed by I think we may want to read this my lord. What's this? Uh, I think this is quite much you approach the bench? Just in case you don't know who has been making those annoying phone calls to your house, it is me. Now, I'm tired of the way you and your friends are playing this game. Now, either you push this witness stand, or I will be forced to do copies of the ownership documents of your files to this journalist there. This is blackmail. It is. Now, you haven't given me much. Have you? Mr. I am a highly placed judge in this country. I will commit you for contempt, then I will sue you for blackmail. I say, try it. Now, even if you even if you do, those boys there, they are journalists. They will tell who was the real reason behind my My lord, we're just telling you that I will go ahead and put this 
Because I took my answer on the witness stand right away by getting my love. The defense counsel is not the mouthpiece of the judge in this court. I think we should give you the due respect and allow you to sit your own things your own way. Well, uh, we'll take Miss Kamsen before this court adjourns. Daramala, I want my daughter testifying in a criminal case. Somebody tell this man to stop disturbing the peace of this court. should be thrown out of this court or for contempt. Please sit down and let us hear what this girl has to say. And honor me with that a little more of As it pleases your life. Miss Cops, I uh, I want you to feel a little more relaxed. Just just relax. Only God knows what Mr. Mopai said to that church. in this court. Does the prosecution wish to cross-examine the witness? No, my lord. Well then, the witness is down. The court will adjourn on the first of when the counsel will address the court. Mr. Mopai, I want to have a word with you. Look, if you think I was brilliant, I must tell you I don't appreciate it. I don't care whether you appreciate it or not. Who the hell do you think you are anyway? An unfortunate man who saved your eyes in the fiery sport. You're trying to destroy that girl's mind. You're trying to contaminate that girl to show your brilliance. Fatima roped the entire 
around her neck. Surely Mr. Ramola, the judge, can't do anything to Kamsa's daughter. He wouldn't dare. I'm extremely angry with Mr. Mokbae for dragging Fatima into that courtroom, even if it was going to save my life. What will happen between Fatima and her parents now? How would Kamsin live under the same roof with a daughter who has betrayed and deserted him in public? How? Alright, let's go. Let's go. She's scared to go home. Why? I'm okay. my, my parents will kill me. Come with me, I'll give you a home, alright? You can stay with me until this whole thing blows over. Come on, sure. Okay. Say 
they couldn't pass on such a horrible legacy to his kids. Because he passed on to him. He inherited a terrible Put on my praise. I couldn't figure that out. Another man sniffed life out of himself because of my stupidity. business. No. I could have found that. I could have taken the pains to conclude my research. But I sell the brat housing. Maybe with all the proceeds I should be able to get off. He also said as, as, as a father he felt sorry for Tony but because he had been bought. There was nothing he could do. I mean, that's the kind of man I killed. Just a fool, Charles. in authority who played dirty was either sacked or retired. Chief Kamsin's AIG friend, who also used his position negatively to favor his friend Kamsin, and ultimately the state, was retired. Everybody is now everybody's enemy. Each party is extremely watchful of the game of the other. There is so much power play. There is so much madness now that we've all become hostages to one another. God, where is peace? Will members of the press please stand up? I hope you have noticed that I am not the former judge handling this case. I will take no nonsense from the press. You have scandalized everybody and embarrassed the chief judge. Any report of the proceedings in my court that is not factual will result in your trial for contempt. And if found guilty, you'll be rewarded with the severest punishment for the offense. This is a very serious case against the state and not any particular individual. So there will be no undue exhibition of power and absurd ego tripping around my court. You may sit down. Now, Mr. Unyedebe, you've had the charges read against you. 
We shall start with the murder charge. Are you guilty or not? I'm talking to you, Mr. Nyedebe. Mr. Mokbai, does your client understand spoken English? My lord, I'm ready to consult with the accused for a minute. Captain, did you hear the judge? Did you hear the judge? I did. Listen, I know you're crazy, but the time for all of that is past. Now, this is a new judge, a chance for a fair trial. Don't blow it. I told you I'll plead guilty if you insist on bringing Fatima as a witness on this case. My God, Tony, it is not me anymore. It is the state that is requesting her as a witness, not me. Then I'll plead guilty. For God's sake, Tony, don't! What's going on there, Mr. Mopai? You're wasting the time of this court. My lord, I'm just trying to clear a few technicalities for my client. Well, speed it up. We haven't got all day to spend here. I'll make it very quick. Tony, please! Mr. Mopai, I will cooperate with you only if you return that girl to her father. Can I show you you've broken her home by bringing her to testify against her father? Tony, don't be stupid. She did not testify against her father. Fatima is a highly cultured girl. I don't want her brought into this court to tell you any more lies. Ha! Mr. Mokwai! My lord, Mr. Oyebibi says he's feeling faint and dizzy. You men want to start the rubbish you were doing with the former judge. I must tell you that I am not in for any time wasting. And I will not hesitate to charge any one of you for the slightest misdemeanor. My lord, can I ask for a small recess? Objection, my lord. There would be no recess. We've barely spent 30 minutes in here. I don't see any reason for a break. By the way, what's the problem with your client? Uh, well, not as serious, my lord. My client is just desperately seeking some form of mental reassurance from his mentor here in the audience, Mr. Wokoli. Overruled. This your client is asking for my wrath, and he will surely get it if he continues this way. I will let him speak with the Wokoli man for but briefly. Oh, uh, thank you. Services. So please, don't aggravate him into dropping out of this case. If you play hostile in this case, you will return with your life. If you pack a death sentence, you will destroy that girl emotionally. Her life will never be the same again. So please, stop being stupid. And let Albert handle this thing the best way he knows how. Please. My lord, my learned colleague, my client will answer you now. My lord, it will do this case a word of good if my learned friend here will come all this necessary to delay. Thank you very much, Mr. Falabi. But how I handle this case is absolutely my business. You may sit down. You too, Mr. Melkwai. Now again, Mr. Nyedebe. You have heard the charges leveled against you. Are you guilty or not? No. I am not guilty. Look at me! You wanna kill yourself? You wanna kill yourself? Right? Stop! 
time. Okay. Look, I would love to uh, sit down and watch you die. But I'm so involved already that I can't do that. Uh, Otherwise, sorry, I, I would sorry. love to turn my back on you right this minute. Sorry, Ivan. Can you imagine what he was trying to do in court? Sorry, Idiot. It's all right. Tony. Look, are you going with me? out of our bedroom lately. And but it's you I'm talking to. Then behave yourself. Please. Yes, you. Are you going to send me out of the house like you threw our daughter out? Or perhaps hire a new set of lawyers and judges to send me to an electric chair. And but it's me you're talking to like this? What's such a big deal about talking to you like this? <laughs> yes, you, Feli Kassan. The almighty rich man who rides false horses around the world. Chief Kansen, who nobody can talk to, nobody can reason with. The man who believes in everything as far as money is settling around him. him. Only a slap? Why didn't you pick up a matchet and hack off my head? After all, you always get what you want. Hey, but why don't you come back to your senses? I am with my senses. Why don't you find yours? It's about time you came back to reality from that ego tripping of yours. Femi Kamsen, I want my daughter back here within three days, or else I am going to pack out of your house. Are you threatening me with divorce? Call it whatever you like, but I want my daughter back here in three days' time, or else I will move out. So you have now taken side with that wayward girl who specializes in disgracing her father in public, eh? Maybe her father asked for it. Maybe you pushed her to the wall and she had no other choice but to pounce back at you. And Femi, don't you ever call my child a wayward girl. That girl has the best of home training. She has a very high moral value. We both worked hard to achieve that. I am allowed to see you try to destroy all we worked hard to inculcate in Fatima. Her refusal to return to this house, it's her absolute choice. Of course, you know that's not true. From the notes she's been sending, it's obvious she's dying to come home. But she's afraid of you, of us. We've been so selfish and insensitive to that girl's feelings. Ever since the nursery room affair, we've turned her into an adult. Did you understand? And what's that child back here? For goodness sake, I, I need to touch her. I want my child back. I want to touch her. I want to feel her. I want to share her joys and sorrows. For God's sake, we're alive. Why can't we enjoy seeing our only daughter grow up? If you feel so strongly about that, why don't you go and bring her home yourself? I have tried. God, how I've tried. I visit that at my house almost every day. And he feels insecure to let me see her. Because he believes he will assault her. He's ready to keep her. Until she's old enough to decide on what to do. But I'm not going to sit here and let another man raise my own child for me. I want my daughter back in this house. Mr. Carson, I want her back. I want my own daughter back in this house. I want her back.
Historia de Ah, I'm Dr. Chumantele. I'm a psychiatrist. We'll assume you know why you are here, shall we? Yes. Good. Still, we won't leave everything to assumption. So, let's go through some of the reasons why you're here. You know, of course, that your counsel, Mr. Mopai, has entered a plea of diminished responsibility due to unsound mind. He believes that if he can convince the court of this, he might be able to avert the tragedy of a capital sentence. But you see, professional ethics forbid that I lie to the court. And the court wants to find out from me the state of your mind at the time you committed the crime. Mr. Mopai and I get along quite well now. There is mutual respect between us. Our only issue of disagreement now is Fatima's absence from our home. And he promised that that would be strengthened out soon. As a legal decoy, he told the court that I'm mentally unstable. I'm supposed to play along those lines. He told the judge he can't cross-examine me because I'll derail everything he's done just to protect Fatima. And this might get me an unfair sentence for manslaughter. I know most men won't care what happens to Fatima had she been their girlfriend. Well, I do. The poor girl was wickedly deflowered by a maniac as she battled to save my life. She's gone through too much pain because of me. She's a little girl for God's sake. <laughs> it was all my fault. Tell me that. Is that enough reason to kill anybody? I did not kill Nasiru. I was hiding in Fatima's bedroom when he was tormenting her by the incident. He was laughing at her. They came out, confronted him, and then we got into a fight. He, he wanted to crash his head in, into my chest or in my stomach. I, I don't know which. I dodged him and he crashed his head into the wall. Her parents are not supposed to know about her affair. Why not? Doctor, no African parents want to know that their little daughters are having affairs. It's a fact they find difficult to comprehend. African parents and their children are not as close as they think they are. Why? It is highly immoral for girls of Fatima's age to reveal their love affair to their parents. I didn't kill Nasiru. I don't wish the Kamsins or anybody any any harm. It's just so unfortunate that nobody understands me. My airlock is unparalleled. My viewpoint and outreach to life differ almost to a fault. So you have a grudge against the society, huh? The society needs to understand me a lot more. But maybe I'm just a misfit. Just, just a misfit. I don't think you're a misfit at all, Tony. You come across to me as an intelligent young man. You are of sound mind, which is exactly what I'm going to report to Mr. Mopai and the court that has assigned me to carry out this session. I realize that the circumstances of my immediate past gets on the nerves of most people. I have no apology for being me. Dr. Ndili allowed me the luxuries of a warm bath and a clean shave. 
I cherish that immensely. She told the Akanga warders standing guard to show humanity and allow me my daily bath. I was found guilty and convicted for murder. Nasir's murder. God knows I didn't kill him. Everybody is shattered. I am sober now. Mr. Mokbaye appeals in an appeal court. We lost again. He has become emotionally involved. Or perhaps is just not used to losing out on anything. What he did next shocked me to say the least.
refusing my drink offer, Febe. Oh, God forbid my doing such a thing, Alaji. It's just that I've had a very heavy lunch. In fact, that was what I was busy at when your call came through asking me to see you immediately. A little drink of water won't harm you at all, Febe. I accept that with total respect, Alaji. Good. Sunday, leave the spring water with Febe. Now, you must be wondering why I sent for you, Femi. Well, I was in my hospital room in Tokyo when one of my doctors came in to tell me that I had a visitor from Nigeria. At first, I thought it would be one of my friends who had business to do in Japan. And who, on hearing that I was receiving treatment in Tokyo, decided to come and visit me to say hello. But instead, this young man walked in, he introduced himself as Mr. Mopae and said he was one of the lawyers involved in the case, uh, uh, Nosiru's case. Naturally, I was not prepared to discuss anything to do with Nosiru with anyone at that time, as you would understand. For you see, Nosiru was like a punishment to me and my family for some sins that we must have committed in the past. Nasiru was like a curse, a curse imposed upon us. <laughs> Nasiru had committed so many atrocities, many abominations humanly possible. And therefore my proposal for him to marry your daughter was based on the belief that perhaps a good wife, a good and decent wife might have a positive effect on him. But I was wrong. And so at the time this young man walked into my hospital room, Nasiru was a closed chapter in my life. But he assured me that he had not come to discuss Nasiru. He said he had come to see me about a young man who might get killed if I did not intervene. So I felt that it was a duty I owed him to give him my full attention. And so I listened patiently to his story. And I was touched and moved by what I heard. He told me that this young man was being persecuted by you. And that he had got a death sentence in spite of all his appeals. He told me that this young man and your daughter Fatima were in love. He narrated how you've done all your best to try to do what you thought might please me by ensuring that your daughter married my son. And your daughter confirmed his story. Fatima. The trip that Mr. Mopae made must have been a very expensive one to him. He brought your daughter along with him to Tokyo to support his story. I was given a very clear picture of a very bad incident that happened between your daughter and my son on my boat. How the boy in detention heard about it and picked up the fight with Nasiru. How Nasiru died in the course, in the scuffle that ensued in that fight. And how everyone involved in the case against the boy happens to be your friend. He also told me how you vowed to avenge every humiliation you think that the boy might have done against you and your family. And how Mr. Mopae had to use your daughter to testify in court to avert a serious judgment against the boy. And how she claims she still loves him. And how she now feels afraid to come back home after testifying against you in court. Well, Femi, I have been reliably informed that the death sentence passed against the boy has been upheld and that the boy's only hope lies in the hands of the governor. I don't know the new chap who is governor, but I understand 
that he's a good friend of yours. Hey, Femi? Yes, Alaji, he's my cousin. Ah, your cousin. Well, I stopped my treatment halfway just to be home to take care of this matter. Mr. Mopai and your daughter have appealed to me to try and beg you to use your influence with the governor to avert this impending tragedy. And I'm also pleading with you, Femi, to do all you can to make sure that the governor does not get this boy killed. If you can do that, I will personally finance the boy's passage to America to start a new life. You see, Femi, those of us who have been blessed with a lot of wealth by the Almighty must make sure that we use this wealth for the benefit of our fellow human beings. Because that way, we will be contributing towards ensuring that we will make our world a better place to live in. We must never try to use our wealth to stifle or to suppress those less privileged ones in our society. We must ensure that we use whatever power it is that we think we have in our hands to improve the lots of our people, to unite them, no matter what part of the country they come from and no matter what their religious beliefs may be. We shouldn't bother ourselves about where our, our children take their, 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 their wives or their husbands from. It is our duty to help to unite our people. Femi, if they kill that boy, what would you have achieved? Perhaps satisfy your ego and perhaps also do something which you think might please me. But let me assure you that I am not pleased by such evil acts. Because Femi, the Almighty has given us a beautiful gift of light. We must never leave room for evil to kill that light in us. Alaji is my daughter here. Yes, she is. And she wants to go back home. I want her. I want her to return home with me. The entire household has been miserable since she left. Sunday, go and bring the girl in the parlor upstairs down here. Penny, I am glad that you are taking the girl back home. It is I who should be grateful to you for your fatherly advice. And I assure you, I'll do all in my power to make sure that the governor lets the Ah, come my daughter, come and greet your father. I have to take the girl home. Her presence will ease the tension at home. I'll try to see the governor tonight about the young man's case. You would have done a good thing, Shelly. Hmm? She's a good girl. She'll be a source of joy to you if you play your role well as a father. Oh, by the way, Femi, when all this trouble have blown over, come back and see me, and we'll talk about that loan thing. I spoke with Chase Van Hatton in New York, and uh, they may have some good news for you. Thank you, Alaji. And if your cousin, the governor, cannot help in this boy's matter, let me know. I know the president. I will speak with him. He will do anything for me.
So don't worry. Alaji, it won't need to get to that. The governor will take care of everything. Senior Charles told me her father has taken her back home. Well, I don't know anything about that. All I know is that there are two of them, the man and the woman. And it's the man who said I should tell you that it's Fatima who wants to see you. Now you go see the dog. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go to Mala. Come on, don't bring her back. Maybe it's Mr. Mokwai. Sir, I don't know. Come on. 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 Good afternoon. You have exactly 15 minutes with your visitors. 15 minutes. She, you know, that Thomas must not know that, that uh, we allow you to see anybody. I beg you, eh? Sir, I will be back in exactly 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Last person on earth you want to see here now, so I. lied with Fatima's name. I want you to realize that this visit means very much to me and my family. come to make peace with you. We have both hurt each other in our different ways, mine being the heavier. In the course of our madness, I came to realize that you mean a lot to my daughter. Now I'm back to my senses. And I find it very difficult to comprehend how circumstances drove things to the state it is now. I owe my daughter, you and myself, a very major favor. I have vowed to get you off this death sentence verdict even if it means spending my entire fortune to achieve it. I have constantly been on the telephone to the state governor's office and residence. I hear he's on an official visit to Borno State. Akin is my cousin. We grew up together in the same compound. He'll do anything for me. Anything. If Allah destined my daughter and you together, who am I to wish otherwise? From now on, I consider you a member of my household. If you so wish.
left with Fatima. Fatima has not been eating well since she returned home. Please talk to her. <clears throat> So any day, you'll have to come with us. What is happening? Huh? Where are we going? Mr. Anyway, we're taking you somewhere. Where? Please, where, where are we going? Huh? Please tell me. Am I going to be executed today? Mr. Oyedebe, we have orders to take you to somewhere. Where? Where, for God's sake? Please tell me. This is shameful. Tell me, am I going to be executed today? Has the governor ratified my sentence? He has. The day before, he traveled out on assignment. And my able director has ordered that we should get the execution over with. Now you boys, hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up! Today is prison environmental! Today is prison environmental! Today is prison environmental! Hurry up! Thank <laughs> you. 
the sentence. Orders. Now, listen, Thomas. Could you please 
stop the act until later in the day. There have been efforts to contact the governor for a possible review of the boy's sentence. I am not aware of any such move, and I don't take orders from the governor. If there is any such development, the, the governor would have contacted the director who would then direct me as the able superintendent of this prison and I... Now, let him go, damn it, Thomas. You don't have a lot of time. Stop those boys right this minute. Listen, Wokolo. I don't take orders from you anymore. You've been demoted, remember? I am in charge now. Please. Please leave me to run it the best way I know how. Stupid. Go. Charles. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now listen, Charles. Charles. Are you still there? Charles. signed the document. Well, he has. Could you please speak with my director to hold the execution until the governor returns? Do you have his phone number at home? I don't know. I changed his numbers recently. I know his address. I'll find the place. God, nothing has happened to that boy. Nothing has happened to that boy. Fatima. Fatima. having delayed the execution. But, but you are the president of the country and your word is final. I have the detailed account of what really happened. Listen, Bashir. If you fail to stop this execution, a misguided young man would have lost his life for nothing. Delegate your state house staff to take action. Ah, oh, thank you, Bashir. I will be counting on you. Thank you. Mr. 
Monsieur Mopaye. Monsieur Mopaye. I don't rely on GSA. If the director wants the assignment suspended, I mean they should write a memo to that person. Short of that, my orders remain that I complete this assignment by 7.20 hours. Please, please try to have some mercy. The director might be at any moment from now. Where is Olakule Excellence Secret Center around here? Answer me, it's you I'm talking to or you are deaf. Where is Olakule Excellence Secret Center? Yes, if you get money in your pocket, you get time for. I better go look for the place by yourself, though.
Where's your father? For two and a half hours. Where did you go? 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 ¡Que lo que yo! ¡Dios! ¡Toma! 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 Something to a song. 